between the Washington football team and the Seattle Seahawks. Both of these teams about to reach the halfway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. At their own 20-yard line. Solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. They'll run for the first time here with Matt Breida. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Decided to hand it off that time on the run pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice steady gain. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Taylor. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. Play action, now Taylor. That one caught by Tyreek Hill. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Next receivers will spread the defense out, and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Credit the sack there to Harold Landry. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. And you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 23. Here's the first carry for Austin Eckler, and he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. 
This running game is so important for them, and they know that. It helped lead them to a victory last week when he was over 100 yards. Let's face it, it's their identity, and that's what they want to play to. They want to be that team that runs the ball really well each and every week, and right now we're seeing a pretty good pattern of that happening. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. three. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. They'll try to pick up the first with Eckler. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Eckler. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now, three plays, all three short runs, but together a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Out of the gun, Eckler running it. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. He's brought down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. The last run got six, now second and four. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. He dumps it to Eckler underneath. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 27 yards there, a first down. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage. And that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Got a man open, it's Ross. Wilson, and he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. It's only three yards on the catch. It's third down. No score after one on EA Sports. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. From the gun, it's Wilson. And Pascal's got it. And he gets it inside the 10 to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And the Seahawks are going to have a first and goal forthcoming as he takes this down to about the five-yard line. When you look at the geography we're staring at, this part of the field, don't you always think of big backs carrying the football, bruisers trying to pound it in. Instead, we look at a little more of a scat back type, and he's trying to make it happen. Yeah, they went with the elusive, slippery guy. Couldn't get in there, though. Hey, pick your game up. Good touch. Second down and goal. Wilson, end zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. John Ross, his fourth touchdown on the year. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play, even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor, in effect. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Taking it about the one. 
And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. At their own 34-yard line. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. Sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Eight for a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid gain. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll get it down here to the 43. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. On first down, it's Taylor. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Now it's Breda. And a short gain down to about the 33. Brita, the ball carrier. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run pass option. You get the sense that next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. First down, Washington. Taylor on first down. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. 17 yards that time at a Washington first. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Number 30, Deron Payne, the big D tackle there to make the stop. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Coming up at halftime, we remind you once again that we're going to check in with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL as we reach now arguably the halfway point of the season. Time flying. It certainly is. Time to get the sweaters out, my man. 
Eight yards on the run there, and that leaves him with third and just a couple. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But if the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid, combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Now a handoff here to his running back. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. A lot depending on the spot there, and he got it. But it wasn't by much, was it? I remember Coach Madden talking about, depending on which foot the official used, that would tell you whether you had the first down or not. You want that upfield foot to be the one that spots the ball, don't you? And you and I have the luxury of a couple extra views here in the booth, and he did get it, but not by much. A chance now to get even before the break. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. Eddie Pinheiro, Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point. It's up and... So all even at seven now as they kick it away. Pulls it in at the 13. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And a good return. Able to get out across the 35 to the 36. At their own 36-yard line. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offensive tummy. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. To throw again, Wilson. That's into the hands of Eckler. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. So they went two yards in the wrong direction on the last pass play, and now it's third and 12. From the shotgun, Wilson. He'll get this to Eckler. They had a nice job there defensively. They get him to the ground short of the first, right around the 42. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. Back deep, Deontay Harris. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Out there set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. He's going to fire one deep left sideline. Oh, nearly a disaster there on the check down. But they'll get it back. But no kneeling for them. They decided they weren't going to run out the clock. They decided to take their shot downfield, hoping to either make a connection or a pass interference call. They wanted more points to put on the board. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Off the play fake, here's Taylor. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 35. And they are going to have a first down, and they're in field goal range as well as they're down inside the 20. The Seahawks take over first and 10 at the 18-yard line. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal Jason unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. 
And Myers able to knock it through. So how about the turn of events there at the end of the half? This is one where you go charging into your locker room having collected three points you didn't expect to get. And you look across the field and you see guys kind of pointing fingers at each other like, dude, how'd you turn it over and make us give up three right there? Well, a good looking return set up here. And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. 36 yard line. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 23. And he will be brought down as time is now run. So we are at halftime here in downtown Seattle with the Seahawks out in front. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. The Seahawks with the advantage and they get the football first as the second half is underway. Taken in at the three. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Seahawks take over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. For I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try and increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. It's Eckler again. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. That's a strong safety making a strong, hard tackle. And we know his coach. Doesn't smile a whole lot, does he? How about that grin right there, ear to ear, after that play? From the gun on third down, Wilson. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. That would be exactly what they were looking for coming out to start the third quarter. Get a sack, get off the field, get the momentum going in their direction. Get the ball back to your offense, right? Get that momentum because, hey, this lead is very, very slim. Harris to return. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to, and if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. The run got four, now they deal with a second and six. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Breida. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Now, that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork, and add a little, little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. On first and 10, it's Taylor. 
And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. It's a first down for Washington on a pickup of 11. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Justin Lane. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. Taylor, You hear me laughing, partner, and I'm not laughing at the situation. But sometimes you just get yourself into a rut. It's hard to shake yourself out of it. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 42. After the interception, here's Wilson. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Chase Young able to get him for a loss of about three. And that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football. Led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. But following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. They'll run out of the gun with Eckler. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. Called it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Third and long, it's Wilson. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. A great return there of 22 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. At their own 31-yard line. Out there set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see. Do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit because his confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up a little bit over on the sideline? Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. And to give this time to the tailback. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. On third down, it's Patterson. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance. But a short yardage, trying to pick up first downs, that big guy, oh, he's a nice luxury to have, isn't he? It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And a lot of times, these plays, they either go for nothing or they go for big yardage. And here, they got to the outside, turned it upfield, and ended up getting a nice little gain out of it. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. 
They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. From the gun, it's Taylor. And going deep for Hill. This is caught. Touchdown, Washington. Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill with touchdown number eight on the year. And Washington has retaken the lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple I remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. The Seahawks take over first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now it's Wilson. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. The Seahawks on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and eight. From the gun, Wilson. Oh, he can't hang on to it. Almost intercepted. They would have loved the first pick of the game there, but at least it does get him to fourth down. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Harris returning. When it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. 24-yard punt. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. 56. Mike, 56. Right there, right there. 56. 56 to Mike. 56 to Mike. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter what point, you got to be super careful. Got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. 16 yards right off the bat with a first down. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. Operating from the gun, Wilson. He'll drop this one off to Eckler. 
They'll contain him to just four. Second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle him almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Looking to throw again on second down. Wilson, quick slant, caught by Moore. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Third down. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. That's a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal game. On third down, here's Eckler. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and it'll move the chains. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. From the gun, Wilson. That's into the hands of his tight end, Will Disley. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. That catch good for only a couple. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Operating from the gun. Wilson, that's complete to Disley, the tight end. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's nine-yard line. It's 18. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. They go back to the ground now with Eckler. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. That'll be a pickup of four as they work with his four-point fourth-quarter lead. It's now second and six at the 14-yard line. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Once more, here's Eckler. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. It's third down and six. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. On third down, Wilson. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Austin Eckler, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Seahawks have once again taken the lead. Eight Seahawks 17, Washington 14. Jason Myers after the touchdown. Here's Myers to boot it away. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And he'll wind up getting a couple extra yards here for his trouble to bringing it out of the end zone as he's down at the 27. At their own 27-yard line. They're set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. 
We saw a number of good games earlier today. This one might top all of those. It's been a dandy as we come up on first and 10. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Taylor's going to keep it himself. They run again with Breida. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. A loss on that play. And now third down gets tougher. Third and six. chance for the backup here to throw he's gonna let it fly and that will be incomplete well they weren't scared to let it fly but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down these are the spots this stage of the game where it pays to have speed on the perimeter doesn't it it certainly does and in the second quarter he may very well run by him but in this situation i know as a defender i'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride now they go for it on fourth down, but that pass is knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Seahawks, they'll get the football back in outstanding field position. Running on first down, Eckler. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. That burst, good for 20 and a first down. I guess he was saving his best for last, so to speak. Longest run of the day coming here in the fourth quarter right there. And that type of run makes for a better night for him and his teammates, doesn't it? To be able to produce this late in the game can lead to some big smiles and satisfaction in the locker room after this one's over. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Now a final chance to stop it here as a timeout comes in with 10 seconds left in the game. Brings up second and five. At the Working with second and five now. Now Eckler. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. So now with six seconds remaining, we get a timeout on the field. The 19-yard line. A gain of a yard on the An extra man in the secondary for Washington on third down. On the ground, it's Eckler. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Third and medium, they opted to run instead of pass, and it worked, first down. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.